how to start an ESL class. Today I will share 10 ways to start an ESL class. A proper lesson plan, good content and a passion for teaching are essential for making class interesting. But sometimes it's necessary to start the class in a different way so that students can stay motivated, engaged and energized. Whatever you pick to do, the start of class is the perfect time to create a routine and get to work as quickly as possible. Number one, instructions on the board. Before class starts, write the instructions on the board. Tell students what book to take out, what unit to read, what activities or worksheets they should immediately start with as soon as they sit down. When they enter class, Engage them, ask them questions about how they're doing, what they did last weekend, what is something special happening that week. It shows them that you are interested in their lives and also conditions them to open up and take part in class activities. Once they sit down, they start by following their instructions and get to work. Too much time is wasted by waiting for students to settle down and take register. This way, you maximize the learning time they have with you and it puts them to work immediately. Students will respect you and you will get a reputation as a teacher who cares about their learning. Number two, scrambled vocabulary. Instead of going through the vocabulary for the lesson ahead, why not write it on the board for them to copy? Alternatively, how I like doing it is writing scrambled words on the board. For older students, you can write scrambled phrases related to the lesson ahead. For example, check out this phrase. Once you unscramble the letters and figure it out, put it in the comments below. Something else you can do is to write a word on the board and ask students to write down as many words they can make using the letters from that word. Here is a website that can help you with that. If you enter a word, it gives all the possible vocabulary you can make from it. When the students are done, ask them for all the words, write it on the board and see who found the most words. Number three, slow down class. You might have seen on social media that teachers have a cute way for students to enter class. Maybe they pick a hug or a handshake. I know that these are cute, but they are ultimately time wasters. If your goal is to calm down an overly energetic class, these can work. But all they do is eat up time and have no value besides social brownie points. Another effective technique to calm all the students is to do a few minutes of guided meditation. Ask students to close their eyes, breathe deeply and prepare mentally for the tasks ahead. Class starters are mostly used to energize and prepare students for class. But if a group of students have too much energy, you may consider slowing them down when class starts. Number four, playing music. Some teachers create an inviting atmosphere by playing pop music. I'm not a fan as it doesn't add anything to the lesson and can often be quite distracting. It could add energy, but loses focus. I'd rather add energy through activities. For example, with young learners, you can start class with a chant. While playing the right music, they sing along and do the movements. This is a great TPR, total physical response activity. I did an alphabet chant that works great for phonics. Check it out up there. Number five, tell a story. Students love listening to an engaging story from their teacher. So tell them a funny and interesting story from your weekend. Teachers have to be good storytellers and that only happens through practice. Extra points if it creates a connection to the work they will do that day. Then you can reference back to the story when you explain certain parts. You can also provide a compelling anecdote related to class content. This might be an interesting fact, a case, a news story that captures students' attention. Number six, 
Icebreaker games. Play an icebreaker that prepares them for the lesson ahead. You can play one of the games from Bamboozle or do some kind of board race. Board races place students into teams where they have to try and be the first team to the end. You can also play some team point games. One of my favorites include a die and scoring. Make sure that each student gets a chance to answer a question. Another simple activity is something like ball toss. Ask a question, throw a soft ball to a friend, they answer, ask a question and throw it to someone else. Number seven, ask questions. This might sound simple, but it's up to the teacher to challenge their students. And we do that by questioning them. By asking questions, you guide them to the theme or topic of the lesson. Start with easy ones to build their confidence. You don't want students to be overwhelmed at the beginning of class. Or you could present a controversial or compelling question for students to think about related course content. Students can also do a think, pair, share activity or ask each other questions. I wrote a book with 1000 questions and answers on 50 topics that students can ask each other. You can see it in the description below. Number eight, review previous lessons. This is a good way to start and prepare them for the lesson ahead. Review earlier sessions. A simple way to start class is with the help of a cool chart, KWL chart. What do I know? What do I want to know or what do I wonder? And what have I learned? Number nine, writing exercises. You as the teacher can guide free writing. Ask students to write a list with a partner, create a mind map between different ideas, a one minute paper or a response to prompt paper. It helps if you give them a visual clue, like a picture to activate their imagination. Quizzes might be stressful for some students, but they are a good way to get the class started. And just because you call it a quiz doesn't mean that it has to count towards the students' grades. Give your students a short quiz on whatever topic you have studied recently or gain insight on their knowledge of the topic you will cover in the coming class. That will prepare them for what's to come. Plus, if you give quizzes often enough, your students will become experts at taking them and do even better at the ones that count. Number 10, mystery bag. A simple paper bag can be a great way to start the day. Put items in the bag and ask a student to feel and describe what they're feeling. Alternatively, you can give each student 10 to 15 seconds to feel inside and then list as many objects as they recognize. See who wrote down the most correct items. Set your lessons and students up for success by starting on the right foot. A good start to class can make or break your life as a teacher.